which is why persistence matters. You teach people to be persistent. And again, Edison is probably, I mean, you, we don't expect people to have try 50,000 times, but how about five? I mean, this is a society where, where one is seen as an imposition. You really want me to do that? I mean, I should actually do my homework? I should actually study? You want me to save? Now, in that framework, I think we've also got to recognize that we are now faced in a way no other society ever has been with lifetime learning. And I think lifetime learning is very, very important. Every citizen must know how to learn new things as requirements in reality change. And, we need, and, and again, this doesn't require going back to school. It requires saying in the mass media over and over and over again, you ought to plan to learn all of your life. And there are lots of ways to learn. You can go to seminars. You can go to school. You can get audio tapes. You can get videotapes. You can check out books. You can, you can play with the internet. But if you aren't learning something every day, you don't get it. And that, this has to become almost a requirement of citizenship in our culture. That we expect every American to learn every day. And so you ought to just relax and accept it. This is what part of what being an American in the 21st century will mean. We also need, I think, to recognize what we mean by the spirit of invention and discovery. That it is a learning attitude, perseverance, hard work, and enthusiasm. That they are the keys to invention and discovery. That's why we talk about the spirit of invention and discovery. You've got to have these attitudes in your head. You've got to be willing to get up and do it. Again, can you imagine saying to the typical teenager today, you want to be as famous as Henry Ford? Well, so what did you do after your job? You have all summer long. I mean, it's part of why I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat resistant at times on midnight basketball, not because I'm opposed to midnight basketball as something to do if, you, if you've already done everything else, but because I'm opposed to the idea that as a culture, we would send a signal that instead of working hard, instead of studying hard, instead of you know, going out and inventing your generation's version of the car, that recreation somehow is, is in and of itself a replacement for these other things. It keeps them busy. And again, I, we're going to get to this when we talk about how, replacing the culture of poverty. But remember, the original midnight basketball was set up by the Salvation Army to attract people there doing what they currently do in order to save them and change their lives so they would do something different. It wasn't a maintenance program. Now, I mean, if you say, we're going to have this great midnight basketball league, and by the way, uh, we're also going to read books and, and look at uh, useful educational films and do other things, then I'd say, okay, now I get it. You're, you're, you're using their current behavior to draw them in to change their behavior. Yeah, if it's a stepping stone, it's good. If it's a stopping place, it's, it, it is exactly the wrong signal. And again, I'm not talking about people who already work you know, 12 hours a day and they want to go play midnight basketball because they need physical recreation and they need mentally to, rec to, to recreate. That's what recreation means. But in order to need to recreate, you need to do something first. Right. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm as interested in what are you doing to create and how do we get you to that point. I also think that, that it's very important to have the, the old Reagan line, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet or the notion that the adventure is only beginning. I think this is, frankly, one of the reasons that the Star Trek series has been successful. The Star Trek series, I think, was a great shock because, because it didn't fit any of the, of the elite culture's views when it first came out. It only ran, you know, for four years. Uh, and then, but it wouldn't die. I mean, it just kept hanging around. I think part of the reason is that in American society, there is this innate sense of the adventure's just beginning. What's going to happen next? Where are we going to go next? And that's a very deep part of how we operate and, and, and of what we look for. At a vision level, what I'm suggesting is that we want to have a pro-spirit of invention and discovery America, creating a better future through better ideas. And we want this to be an active, positive commitment, where our attitude is when we bounce into a problem, wow, an opportunity to, to, to have better ideas. I wonder what we should do to solve this one. Which, if you think about the tone, is a totally different tone and is an energy creating tone. I mean, I mean, if being hungry is an excuse to bake a cake, that's a totally different thing than being hungry being an excuse to sit and whine. One depresses your energy level, the other increases your energy level. Uh, there's a book on it called Learned Optimism, which argues that leaders consciously know how to increase the energy level by deliberately being optimistic. In addition, let me suggest to you that we, have a, we ought to have a vision 
that the goal of a free society is not an American dream. It is to have 260 million Americans dreaming. I mean, the, whole, the whole neat thing about being an American is that each of us gets to pursue happiness. Each of us gets to go out and define who we are and what our future is. There's not the American dream. Rather, there are 260 million Americans. And the truth is, how many of you have had several dreams already in your life? Where you thought you were going one way and now you're going a different way? Seriously, raise your hand. How many of you found, okay, so there are 260 million Americans dreaming. That's why we didn't say there are 260 million American dreams. Because any individual American might have multiple dreams, right? I mean, I want to be a dinosaur collector. I want to be a zookeeper. You know, I have, I have five or ten other things I won't bore you with right now. Uh, at least three of which my wife will shoot me if I say in public. Uh, <laughs> but the whole point is that people are allowed to, and particularly if we're going to live to be 90 or 100, I mean, why not go for it? Have three or four or five dreams in your lifetime. Now, if that's our vision level, it seems to me our strategies ought to be to have big goals, to have a cultural change in attitude and understanding, to rethink government so it encourages the spirit of invention and discovery. And to have changes in learning, a pro-invention, pro-discovery tax code, set up prizes, set up X projects, have a common sense legal system, encourage small business, and encourage genius. Now this is a lot, so let me just walk you through some examples. But now you'll see how some of them fit together. First of all, we ought to set big goals for our generation. I mean, I think we ought to certainly have a, a, a permanent base on the moon in the next few years. We ought, to, we ought to reduce the cost of space travel to a point where it becomes a reasonable alternative to a honeymoon uh, at Disney World. Uh, I think that we ought to uh, certainly be on Mars, but within 15 years, maybe less. I think we ought to, we ought to design an information system in such that every person who gets ill, if it's a serious illness, you can access through the Internet all the current data on your disease so you can learn about your problem, because you're going to study it a lot more than your doctor is. I mean, just, we ought to have a whole series. We ought to have a lifetime learning system, so there's easy access for every citizen, probably through the libraries rather than the schools. So we, have, we, so we don't have a teacher-dominated, bureaucratic, credentialed model. But where you can say, I need to learn next, I think I'll go check it out. We ought to have huge goals. We ought to eliminate poverty in America by being serious about reaching out to help the poor instead of just sending them a check. And we, ought to, and we ought to say, here's what it takes to eliminate poverty in America. You've got to be persistent. You've got to work hard. You've got to have a sense of the future. I mean, these are, now, there will always be a willful minority who say, I don't want to. Fine. Those, I mean, you are in a free society allowed to not be part of the common culture. But then we're going to say, OK, that's your choice. Now you have consequences. It's a very different model than the current model. Now, and this, uh, so let's think about big prize. You know, what if, what if one of our big goals was to find five Edisons in the next generation? You think about what he contributed. If you had five in parallel, each in their own zone, playing their own game, think of, in a sense, Bill Gates is like that, but smaller than Edison. I mean, Edison truly was a historic phenomenon. But what would a society be like that encouraged that rather than discouraged it? Look at just the scale of change at the DNA revolution in, med in, in health. We're entering the age of molecular medicine, but it's combined with an explosive capacity to share the information through the computer system. So literally, it's conceivable in the next 10 or 15 years, if every citizen could have access, it is conceivable that you'd have just a remarkably different environment. And that as each breakthrough is occurring, you could be applying it in a, in a, in a very different style than we've ever thought about in the modern age. But there's no reason for doctors to have a monopoly of knowledge. It's just a question of how you want to organize it. Yes, sir. Although, although I have not read the article in this morning's journal, uh, Constitution, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, is now on the Internet. And one yep. can access Which is CDC good. research. It's the beginning of the, new, of the new way of doing things. And you can design expert systems where you literally enter it and, and it will ask you questions and it walks you through a lot of self-diagnosis that helps you begin to think, well, what do I want to do? 